Good morning. morning. Greetings to you all and welcome again to Zion Lutheran Church. The focus of our worship this morning is living out your faith in obedience to God because of all the things that he has done for us. Yet before we we go through our regular worship, we have a special uh, gospel treat Uh, There's a baptism we're going to start our worship off with. And because of that, we're going to open with the opening hymn, See This Wonder in the Making, that's hymn 300. If you'd like to follow along with our worship in your hymnals, we start on page 12. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Our Savior Jesus Christ commanded baptism when he said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All of us are born into this world with a deep need for baptism. From our parents, we inherit a sinful nature. We are without true fear of God and true faith in God and are condemned to eternal death. But Jesus took away our sin by giving his life on the cross. At our baptism, he clothes us with the robe of his righteousness and gives us a new life. Our sinful nature need not control us any longer We recall what baptism means for our daily lives as we speak these words. Baptism means that the sinful nature in us should be drowned by daily sorrow and repentance, and that all its evil deeds and desires be put to death. It also means that a new person should daily arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. As baptized, Children of God, we confess our sins. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. 
but I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, cozy up here. They want to see a kid. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, in obedience to the command of our Lord and trusting in his promise, you have brought Jake Ryan Fitzgerald to be baptized. Jesus told, it, told us, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. It is in baptism that God grants the new life of forgiveness, joy, and peace to little children. By the power of God's word, this gracious water of life washes away sin, delivers from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe. Receive now the sign of the cross on the head and on the heart to mark you as a redeemed child of Christ. Jake Ryan Fitzgerald, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has forgiven all your sins. And by your baptism, you are born again and made a dear child of your Father in heaven. May God strengthen you to live in your baptismal grace all the days of your life. Peace be with you. Please rise. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord commands that we teach his precious truths to all who are baptized. Christian love, therefore, urges all of us, especially parents and sponsors, to assist in whatever manner possible so that Jake may remain a child of God until death. If you are willing to carry out this responsibility, answer, yes, as God gives me strength. Yes, as God gives me strength. Let us pray. Merciful Father in heaven, We thank you for the blessing of baptism by which you offer and grant the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Help us to regard our baptism as the robe of righteousness we are to wear all the days of our life. Look now with special favor on Jake and grant him a rich measure of your spirit, that he may grow in faith and godly living, and make us willing to carry out our responsibilities to those who have been baptized, so that all of us may finally come to the blessed joys of heaven through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. If you're following along in our hymnals, you can turn now to page 17, and we'll continue with the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you know that we are surrounded by many dangers and that we often stumble and fall. Strengthen us in body and mind and bring us safely through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may now be seated as our choir sings.
Our first lesson this morning is from Micah chapter 6. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up. Plead your case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, O mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you and also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Balak, king of Moab, counseled and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to preach good news. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. In our gospel this morning, Jesus tells us how we can show our faith and our thanks to God. Our gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5. Glory be to you. Now when he, that is Jesus, saw the crowds... He went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, o And we now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please now be seated for our hymn of the day, and that's found in your praise books, not in your hymnals, but in your praise books, uh, and that's pages 141 and 142. I was singing with the choir earlier, so I didn't oversleep in case you were wondering why I wasn't up here. Grace and mercy and peace are yours. It all comes to us from God our Father and through his only Son and our only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God to which we direct and focus our attention is recorded for us in the epistle reading for this day, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. 
God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and to despise things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is God's word, and we offer a brief prayer. Abide, O dearest Jesus, among us with your grace, that Satan may not harm us, nor we to sin give place. Abide, O dear Redeemer, among us with your word, and thus, now and hereafter, true peace and joy afford. Amen. I imagine there are those that have great confidence in one of those teams today, whether it be the San Francisco 49ers or the Kansas City Chiefs winning today. And anyone making any kind of bold prediction could loosely simply say, it's the team that scores the most points. They're the better team. They're a better team because they're better coached. They're a better team because they're more athletic. That's why they're going to score more points. They're a better team because they're bigger, stronger, and faster. That's certainly the way the world would look and measure things that are before us. And only time will tell when that clock hits zero as to which is the better team. Our God, again, reminds us that while in this world individuals are elevated because of their talent, because of their ability, because of their knowledge, because of their wealth, we may have individuals that certainly show themselves to be superior vocalists, superior as far as knowledge and trying to uh, diagnose and, and really figure things out. Uh, we have certainly super athletes and those that are powerful, whether that be in the political realm or simply influential because of the position they hold maybe as a CEO or the head of some car large corporation. And they'll get worldly recognition. Uh, the great vocalist uh, certainly may get a Grammy Award, uh, the great actor or actress, an Oscar. And that individual that has somehow influenced the world to make it a better community, a better place, may well get a Nobel Prize. Our God, again, reminds us not to look at the things that the world looks at. Not to use that measuring stick. But to recognize that God's determination, God's measuring, what God values is what we need to value. So that in the end, when we see successes, when we see prosperity, when we see uh, accomplishments, made by us as individuals or as a body of Christ, we do not hesitate. Do not hesitate at all, but to boast in the Lord, not in ourselves. That clearly becomes the malady, the problem that is being addressed by the Apostle Paul, that we contain our boasting, create boundaries, and recognize the things that we have are are gifts from God. And so we should be praising the giver of the gift, not the, the gift, but the giver, the creator, not the creation, the one who so blesses us. And so God leads us to recognize, again, that he chooses, uh, chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He's just not telling us this. There's a reason we really want to know Bible history. We really want to know examples from Scripture that validate and reinforce this truth. 
because there is a track record that reinforces this. If you go back in the Old Testament, you may well think of how there was a, a large nation of slaves, slaves in Egypt. And God would take that nation of slaves, that group of people, that tribe of people, and he would relocate them to the promised land and make them into a great nation. Indeed, at, at a time, many would recognize that during the time of, of David and Solomon, one of the greatest nations on the earth, God can do that. Turn a millions of slaves into a great nation. And he did it. We also recognize in the time when there were the judges that God took a leader, Gideon, and defeated a great army of Midianites with but 300 men. We also probably know very well the story of David as a young shepherd boy, seemingly weak, not really looking like a trained warrior by any means, but one who had the Lord God on his side and who relied and depended and trusted in that Lord God, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, and defeated the giant Goliath. We recognize again and again how the Lord uses the seemingly weak and it less influential, far less influential, to bring about a miracle. It was that poor, unwed, young virgin, Mary, who becomes the mother of our Lord. He chose shepherds, lowly shepherds in the fields, to be the very first messengers, the very, the very first proclaimers to herald the birth of our Savior. He chose fishermen, not those that would have had the degrees of the highest institute of learning, but rather fishermen to be his disciples and apostles. The, one of the foundations that scripture tells us is a foundation of the church. Jesus, the chief cornerstone indeed, but the words of the prophets and the apostles is a foundation of Christ's church. Yes, our God again and again has chosen those seemingly weak and small things to humble the great, the powerful, the proud. Let's never forget the common denominator between, among all people. Whether we're talking about a homeless man or whether we're talking about a president or of, of a nation, of an institution, of a company. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. David addresses this common denominator when in Psalm 62 he tells us, Low-born men are but a breath, the high-born are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. He reinforces that in Psalm 39 when he says, Show me, O Lord, my life's end, the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere handbreadth, Brief, in other words. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. But you and I have this confidence that our Lord is the everlasting God. He has no limits to his power, no limits to his love. He is not boxed in or caged in or has some kind of parameter or boundary that limits him in any way. And so when we trust in him, we say with David in Psalm 27, and many of us may recall singing this last Sunday as the Psalm of the day, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? <clears throat> As you and I become aware of, of this weakness in us, 
of this vulnerability in us, of this inability for us really to be in charge, we yet live in a world that thinks otherwise, and we will heavily be influenced by them. There are really two things that the world will always want to throw at us uh, to, to roadblock our, our faith in Christ, our dependence on him who laid down his life for us, who became a lowly servant. Think of that. In God's plan, he takes himself, the second person of the Trinity, to become flesh, to live in such a way that Jesus never owned a house. He never became rich or powerful, but was a servant, setting aside the full use of his divine power and glory so that he would one day die for us. This is God's way of reminding us of what is truly important, clinging to God's plan, clinging to what is important to God and has become important to us. Because through him alone, do we have victory over the grave? Do we have victory over the guilt of sin? Do we have victory over hell? So again, back to the world. What does the world purport? What does the world encourage? The world tends to encourage either legalism, that idea that, that I can lift myself up by my own bootstraps, and with rugged individualism, I can, I can get through life. I can make something of myself. I can lean on myself, my ingenuity, my intellect. And there are individuals that have gone from rags to riches, and I understand that and recognize that. But we have to realize that whatever gifts we have, whether they be monetary gifts or talents and abilities, they can be gone tomorrow. Some, some great catastrophe can happen. So God teaches us not to rely on those things that the world wants us to rely on. We are not in a position to, to meet God on our terms, but to meet God on his terms. And that is with a contrite, a sorrowful, a repentant heart. And the other fallacious, false notion that the world might throw at us is, is this idea of living for the moment and not thinking about the future. Just seeking to validate your existence now. Some might call this the philosophy of existentialism. And it, without using that word, pervades many movies. It, it really causes people to realize we, in a sense, that we are to think of living life without God, in other words. That's the existentialist. And the existentialist actually um, says, if there is a God, I guess it's me. And so he dethrones God, pushes God off his throne, and he sets the standard, that individual. No moral absolute, no right or wrong. I'll determine what's right. I'll determine what's wrong. And there is a prevalence of that kind of relativism, that kind of squishiness as far as what's right or wrong. Thank God that our God communicates to us and reminds us that in simple things, he demonstrates his power. We saw that here this morning, that it wasn't just mere water and a few words. It was holy baptism. That our God tells us that everyone who has been baptized in Christ has been clothed with Christ. And Peter reminds us, baptism does now save you also. It is a power of God. And young Jake Ryan serves also as an example for us. As Jesus himself tells us, let the little children come to me. Unless you have faith like a little child, you cannot enter into it. And we know that as children grow from that infancy, that they, they have a level of trust in what you have to say. And our God wants us to, to learn and to acquire that kind of character, that kind of attribute, to trust God, to trust his word, to know, as you and I so well know here, I know I'm preaching to the choir, that this is not just paper and ink. 
It is God speaking to us. That which would appear to be foolish to the world is powerful. Is powerful. And for those of you here today that have the, the privilege of, of receiving the Lord's Supper, you in that sacrament will also receive more than just unleavened bread and grape wine, but also the very body and blood of Christ with the assurance that the debt of your sin is paid in full and you are right with God. And certainly we have that already in the absolution that we heard this morning for those that, that may not be able to take communion here. But we have that assurance because of Jesus, because of what he has accomplished and done. Not to uh, belabor the thought of some game that's being played later this day, but for someone to boast about their team, to brag about the team that's going to win, that they are a great fan of, to say it's the better team or they're number one is rather presumptuous because you really have to wait for the outcome. You have to have a basis upon which to say this is the better team. And our God, well, in short, because it's got to be played out. The game's got to, it's got to happen on the field. It doesn't matter what Vegas says or, or what the majority say, who's the better team. It's got to be played out on the field. And how blessed we are to know that God's word, God's promises are played out for us, aren't they? That God has already sent that Savior. That that Savior has already lived in your shoes, in your stead, as your substitute. And has accomplished what we could not accomplish. Has done what we have not done. Has lived the perfect holy life and then died. Suffering the shame, the pain, the persecution, the ridicule of crucifixion. Our hell. He endured our hell for us. It's been played out. And now, in that, we do not hesitate, and ought not to hesitate, to boast in the Lord. Always. Not just here, where it's easy to boast, as we are in worship, to praise our God, but in our lives, as we seek to align our lives with God's will. In the world that we live, many would say, might makes right. You've probably heard that before. And that's, again, the thinking of the world. But our God comes to us and reminds us that that right is done. It is accomplished. It is finished in Jesus, as the closing words of our text tell us. In Jesus Christ, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Yes, you and I have that wonderful, glorious status. No matter where we are in life, as far as income or ability, we have that righteousness and holiness and redemption. We've been bought back and set free from sin, death, and hell, and forever with our Lord in his heaven. Celebrate that. While you may, again, in the way of the world, you see a homeless person, and you see a rich CEO. The world has their opinions about that, but this is God's opinion. The homeless man who knows his Savior, who knows that Jesus is his Lord, now and forever, and trust in him has a place in heaven. If that rich, wealthy CEO denies Christ, he has forfeited that gift of heaven. Ask yourself which you would rather be then. And thank God that you have that treasure that is more important than any paycheck. You have Jesus, who is your righteousness, your holiness, and redemption. And then without hesitation, let us boast in the Lord. Amen. Please rise.
Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep our heart, our mind, and our faith forever in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Together we now sing Create in Me. be seated and at this time we gather our thank offerings if you haven't already also take time to put your name on the friendship register Please rise as we sing hymn 483. with our prayers this morning, we include these special requests. First, uh, a prayer for healing and strength for John Cook, who is again in the hospital. Secondly, a baptism of thanks for, uh, uh, a prayer of thanks for the baptism and uh, God's continued grace uh, in the lives of the Fitzgerald family. Um, Also, there's a request for Ken Crabby's mother and father. Um, Arlene, his mom, is at, uh, in the hospital, and his dad is going into a nursing home. And finally, um, we have some prayers for gospel ministers. The first is Mrs. Kayla Wilkins, who has been called to serve ILS for, as a first grade teacher. And I also wanted to 
uh, bring before us pastors Dustin Bloomer and Frank Italiano, both of whom are close by and, and in our circuit, and they not only hold their current calls where they serve, but also they've been called to ministry elsewhere, and we're going to pray God's hand of blessing as they consider those opportunities for ministry. We pray. Lord of all goodness and God of all mercies, we ask you to look on your servants and to strengthen those who are weak and heal them by your grace. Uh, most importantly, use the, the tough situations in their lives to turn their hearts to you and to trust in you in all things. Lord, we thank you again for the baptism of Jake this morning, and we ask your continued hand of blessings on the family as you continue to grow them uh, in love with each other and in, in, uh, in faith in you. Lord, we also bring before you these gospel ministers, Kayla Wilkins, Dustin Bloomer, and Frank Italiano, and we ask you to bless them as they uh, have now received new calls to ministry and we ask you to bless them as they consider how they may best serve you. We also pray, uh, according to what's printed for us in the bulletins, Lord Jesus, you promised to fill all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. But my old sinful flesh constantly craves my own self-righteousness. We have valued self-indulgence instead of following your word. Eternal Savior, Cover us with your righteousness and rescue us. Bless us with hearts that always seek first your kingdom and righteousness and a faith that longs for your salvation and a life of obedience to you. Give us hearts like yours, O Lord, that we notice the needs of others and help them in their needs. Lord, in your undeserved favor, you have given us your peace to share in our lives. Give us also opportunity and strength to proclaim your peace to those burdened by fear, pain, loss, or guilt. Let's ask God's continued blessings as we pray the way that Christ has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived among us as a human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Then in the same way after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, 
and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise as we return thanks. Lord, now you let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all people. A light to light in the Gentiles and the glory of your people is I'll give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. And you may be seated for our closing hymn, 249. Again, greetings to you all in the name of Christ our Lord. I have a few announcements for you. The, the first is that there are giving statements available for you. So for tax purposes, if you need those forms, we have the 2019 giving statements available on your way out. Secondly, again, I want to mention to keep in your prayers Pastor Italiano and also Pastor Bloomer. And then uh, finally also Kayla Wilkins, all of which have received calls to ministry. And keep in mind our Super Bowl party today starting at, was it five, five o'clock. Today here, 
starting at 5. Uh, and looking forward even further, look for the chili cook-off this, on the 16th at the Shane Beck Farm at 3 o'clock. God bless your week.